Is this your first bear market rodeo? If so, this video takes a look at how things went during the previous bear market in 2018 and how things are playing out during this current crypto meltdown. Time to learn about the key differences and what you could possibly expect in this market downturn. In December of 2017, Bitcoin reached a then all-time high value of $19,100. And over the following year, it collapsed to a low of $3.2,000, equivalent to a maximum drawdown of 83%. And so far, Bitcoin has fallen 73% from its 2021 all-time high. And should it match the drawdown seen in 2017, it could fall to as low as $11,400. And likewise, another 11 months of decline could be in the cards to match the 18-month bear market seen in 2018 and 2019. And that said, according to data from Glassnode, Bitcoin's realized price currently sits at $23,340. This is the average price of every Bitcoin in the supply valued at the last time it was spent on chain. Bitcoin only rarely did below this price, and usually it's near the end of a bear market. At its current value of around $20,000, Bitcoin is trading at roughly a 11% discount to its realized price. It's also trading to a similar discount to its average mining costs. This could be perceived as an indication that the bottom might not be far. Moreover, according to Bitcoin's MVRZ score, a measure of the difference between the market value and the realized value of Bitcoin, Bitcoin can now be considered undervalued, but did reach far lower levels in 2018 and 2020. Looking at Bitcoin's daily active user base between 2017 and 2021 peaks, the number increased by 10%, growing from 966,000 daily active addresses in December of 2021 to over 1 million addresses in April of 2021. Comparatively, Bitcoin's market cap increased by 300% over the same period. While the number of daily active addresses has only increased by 10% between all-time highs, the total number of Bitcoin addresses almost tripled over the same period rising from 354 million to 976 million. And this increase in both Bitcoin active and total addresses has contributed to the general network being more widely adopted and traded in this market cycle compared with 2017. Bitcoin's average daily volume is now close to $5 to $6 billion compared with 2017's level of around $0.8 to $0.9 billion. Now let's take a look at ETH. Ethereum fared far worse than Bitcoin in the previous bear market. ETH collapsed from an all-time high of $1,396 to a low of $86 between January and December of 2018, equivalent to a 93.8% decline. And for comparison, Ether is currently down 81% from its 2021 all-time high after falling from $4,812 to $896 over the last seven months. Although Ethereum's value increased by 244% between its 2018 and 2021 all-time highs, the total value locked or TVL in decentralized finance exploded to $66.7 billion amidst a launch of DeFi apps on Ethereum such as Uniswap, Compound, Synthetics, and Yearn, and hitting $184.5 billion at its highs, where a majority of activity is concentrated on the Ethereum network. Meanwhile, the total number of tokens listed on CoinMarketCap climbed from 1,359 to almost 20,000. If Ether were to match its drawdown in the 2018 bear market of 93.8%, then it could be said to fall as low as $292. And to put this into perspective, that would entail a further 67% drop from its current all-time lows of $896. While current investors may believe that dollar cost averaging into some or all of the top 10 cryptocurrencies will best balance risk, it should be noted that almost half of 2017's top 10 crypto tokens by market cap failed to recapture their former glory. Indeed, Bitcoin Cash, NEM, Stellar, and IOTA no longer hold a position among the top 10, having fallen as follows. Bitcoin Cash previously ranked as 4, now ranked 27, NEM previously ranked 6, now ranked 102, XLM previously ranked 9, now ranked 24, IOTA previously ranked 10, now ranked 63. All four of these cryptocurrencies failed to break their 2017 all-time highs in the 2021 bull run, despite seeing a significant rally from their all-time lows. As always, predicting exactly how a bear market will play out is always a tricky task, particularly given today's sketchy macroeconomic climate. Nonetheless, it's widely acknowledged that those that make the right moves now will be the ones that benefit the most if and when the market recovers.